Right. I'll tell you what the worst thing about this is. You don't know how much it's going to hurt, do you? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Diabetes, what next? Well, what next for me and Carol? Carol's not diabetic, but uh, of course she's interested in my health. So we want to make sure that nothing happens to her as well. Update. Let's see, I've got a few notes here. What do I want to say? First of all, thank you ever so much for all your comments. Uh, very kind of you to share your experiences and advice. A couple of people said I should ignore everything everybody is saying. Well, I don't operate that way. I'm a great believer in sharing best practice and advice. It reminds me of when I joined the police and I met my tutor constable, Mike Boar. What a lovely guy he was. Anyway, the first day I met him, he said to me, now listen, a lot of people in the police force are going to give you advice. Some of it will be good, some of it will be bad. But the most important thing is never ever tell anybody that you know that already, or that it's rubbish, or whatever. Because if you do that, they'll never give you any advice again. Just to reassure people, I have been to the doctor, I have spoken to a diabetic nurse, I have had the leaflets, I've even been on a course, so I know what I'm supposed to be doing. But I've also watched a ton of YouTube videos from people who I have confidence in and I respect their views. Just to say, I am doing a lot of research, so uh, I'm not winging this as some people seem to think I am. So what's my strategy going forwards? Well. I'm going to cut out all the things that are obviously bad for me. I'm going to be reducing carbs quite significantly, but not eliminating them altogether. The biggest difference is I'm going to be cutting down the portion size. I eat way too much. You've all seen that. I know that. So the portion size is going to be reduced. I'm going to be massively increasing the exercise, cardio and lifting weights. I uh, need some new weights because my weights, the heaviest weights I've got at home are only three kilograms, which is nowhere near enough to build muscle. So if you've got any tips on good weights to buy, dumbbells I'm talking about here, and I'd also like, um, I don't even know what it's called, but you know, the bar with the weights at the end so I can do um, some alternative exercises as well. But if you know any good sets on Amazon that I can, I can buy, do let me know, please, in the comments. I'm also going to be upping the walking and uh, particularly hills. We're very lucky we've got a National Trust property near us with some really good hills in there. So I'm going to be doing some circuits in there, I think. And last but not least, I bought myself a continuous glucose monitor so that I can actually see what my body is doing. And I've been wearing it uh, two, two, maybe two and a half days now. It's absolutely fascinating. They're blooming expensive, but for me in this situation, it's worth it. Last but not least, I'm going to enjoy life. I'm not going to cut myself off from life's pleasures, but they will be reduced and it will be part of a more controlled diet. But life is for living. None of us know how much longer we've got left. So I'm going to enjoy myself with Carol. Now, lots of you are saying go carnivore and or keto. I've never tried the carnivore diet, but uh, I have tried keto. I had great success with it. I did it for several months and I lost a lot of weight. But in the end, I couldn't sustain it because I didn't enjoy the diet. And I want variety. So I'm going to have to do the weight loss uh, a slightly modified way, I think. Right, let's update you on what's been going on since we last spoke to you. If you heard that, that was my stomach rumbling. All I've had this morning is one egg uh, as a savoury breakfast. Having said that, I don't usually eat breakfast. So let's explain to the folks. This is the CGM monitor I've gone for. It's an ICANN. I don't know if it's a good one or not. It's just the first one I saw in the pharmacy. So I've got that and it comes with an app like everything. And basically I've got to stick it on my belly here. So I've shaved that area of my belly. I've washed my hands. I've done everything in the destruction, in not the destructions, in the 
instructions and it just says pull those two things apart right oh, okay yeah there we there go are. yeah it's just tough the implantation site should be five centimeters away from both sides of the belly button it is recommended to choose above the belly button and below the ribs Avoid sights under belts, on the waistline, scars, etc. And use alcohol pads for disinfection. There's a big needle in there. Didn't touch it. Mm. Right, okay. How many times have we watched this now? <laughs> Quite a few, haven't we? What's that, rubbing alcohol? That's, yeah. Yeah. Just nice that off. Just to clean the area. Right, so I've got to take the receptor out of here. You've got to avoid pressing this button. Then this gets lined up with this blue line. Then you have to press it down. It's hard to press down, yeah. Yeah, you've got to press it down and not touch the middle of it. There you go. There you click. go. That was a click. Yeah. And then on the top here, you've got a little marker. So that's locked. And that's unlocked. So we twist it to the unlocked position. Can you see that? Now we're armed, so this will set it off. So next, place the arm sensor applicator over the chosen site. Press the button in the middle until you hear an injection sound. Gently pull the applicator away from your body. Press the adhesive around the sensor so that it sticks securely to your skin. Right there, yeah? Uh, ready? Is that filming? Because I can't do this for Yeah, while. release. Yeah. Release Wodger. Oh, hang on. God, it's hard to press. Hang on, dude. It's definitely locked. I think what I was doing wrong there is I turned that dial and I didn't hear a click. And you're supposed to hear a click. Mm -hmm. So I've turned it now as far as I possibly can. So now it should come back out. out. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So now you've got it out. So now. now it goes on the spot. Yeah. One, two, three. Didn't hurt at all. I did feel it go in, but it's nothing like I thought it would be. Okay, so you just press around the, the glue. Hold it on for a few seconds. There you go. I'm walking around with a big sword in my belly. You're fully armed. I'm fully armed. Okay, so that can come down. Okay. Now, click next. Searching for transmitter. This better blooming work. Start sensor. Successfully, Successfully implanted. implanted. <laughs> What have they implanted in you? They've been implanted by China. Yeah. That's it now. They can just scan you the rest of your life. Got it. Okay, so now there's two hours. I wait two hours for this sensor to warm up and then I'll start getting readings. So we'll update you when that happens. Two hours from now. So 12.46, just before lunch, eh? <clears throat> Let's see what we get. It's been two hours since I fitted the monitor and I've got my first reading and it is 130. Don't know if you can see that, but that's in the green zone. And this morning I've been fasting in any way, which we normally do. So I'm just about to prepare lunch now. I'm going to make a chicken curry with jacket potato, but I'm not going to eat too much of the jacket potato. Anyway, let's see. I'll let you know what happens after I've eaten that. So I think I'm going to prepare this curry like I would normally prepare it. So I'm not going to trim back on all the amounts. And the reason for that is I want to be able to see the difference between what I used to be doing and, you know, the changes I make. So maybe for the first couple of days, I'm just going to eat normally and see what happens.
Now if you remember in my previous video I talked about the fact that if you eat salad with some vinegar on it before you eat a carb meal you will reduce the impact of those carbs on your sugar level. Enjoying your salad and looking at my monitor it's dropping rapidly. I've only literally just started eating this um, so it's now 115 so it's going down. I've no idea if that's in reaction to the salad or it's um, it's just calibrating itself. Let me show you but you can see there if you can it's falling. So we've eaten our salad and now I'm going to make the curry. So in this box are cooked red lentils and purified cooked onions which I prepared um, a couple of days or so ago now. Right I've cooked my spices I've put my onion and lentil mix in and now I'm going to add in some tomatoes and this is obviously going to make too much sauce for one meal but I'll just put half of it in a box so the chicken's gone in uh, this was three chicken thighs that I cooked on the bone all the ingredients on this has been pre-cooked and this is some frozen mixed veg okay that's the finished cu curry I'm gonna have it with half a wrap um, that's um, whole grain wrap and I got uh, another half portion in there for another day well I had my meal uh, almost an hour ago now and the current reading is 128 so it hasn't spiked I'm well within the green band so we're now going to go out for our daily walk and I'll see what impact that has so as you can see by the time I got my boots on my reading had risen to 146 so it's 314 now and we just got back from the walk so I'm a bit hot and sweaty and the blood sugar is reading 126 so it's flatlining now so that meal I just had didn't cause me a spike at all and maybe the walk made it level out I've no idea time will tell well I hope you found that useful thank you for watching uh, please like share and subscribe if you think this uh, video could help anybody else and we'll see you in the next one our next video is going to be another one in the series from Scotland. Cheers.